Welcome to this official presentation of checks to our principals for the, for the payment of facilities fees, which had been pronounced publicly by the Honorable Prime Minister, Honorable Philip J. Pierre, and also by our Honorable Minister, Sean Edward. First of all, you would have noticed the agenda um, would have indicated remarks by the Honorable Prime Minister. Uh, let me first of all apologize on his behalf, and, and we would appreciate too that even in his capacity, some urgent last minute things comes up, and we know that his heart is in the right place. He really wanted to be here, and he has expressed um, his um, disappointment with not being here, but he wishes us well. So, principals, I know at this particular time, you're extremely busy gearing up for the reopening of school. However, I also know that you two have been eagerly waiting and asking when are the facilities fees money is coming through. Well, it's finally here. So I really thank you for your patience and understanding during this time. And I thank you also for being here despite your busy schedule. Our very own minister, Honorable Sean Edward, I want to also thank you immensely for applying the pressures at all ends to ensure that this came to fruition within, I would say, short time, because knowing all of the processes, I know it's a little beyond, but I do appreciate the efforts, Honorable Minister. And I also want to ask that you thank the Honorable Prime Minister for making this the finances, as, his, as Minister of Finance, for making the, the finances available. Um, and not only available to our schools, but more importantly, to our parents, because we know the crisis that they would have gone through during the COVID, this COVID environment and they continue to go through. And we know it filters down to the schools because if the parents don't have money, the schools don't get facilities fees. So we are very pleased that the government has taken the initiative to pay facilities fees on behalf of the parents for each and every child in our public primary and secondary school system. So without further ado, let me first of all invite our parliamentary secretary, Honorable Dr. Pauline Antoine Prosper, to share some brief remarks. Dr. Prosper. Today is indeed an historic moment. For the first time, the government of St. Lucia is paying facility fees for all public school students. This is indeed a moment to celebrate. This gesture is indicative of a government who cares about children, committed to assisting parents with the education of their children, and a government committed to easing the burden of finding resources for the daily operation of schools for principals. I was a school principal for 17 years. And I know the challenges of parents. I watched in the faces of parents when school reopened. And some of them would tell you, Miss, livre la, Miss, man large facility fee. Es mo sa pay 150 ya for insurance. So parents have been suffering. And at this time, when we are faced with a, a COVID pandemic, it has to take a caring government to understand that we need to come to the aid of parents. And this is why we are here this morning. So for all those who are asking when, the time is now. The moment is here. We are here to deliver. And we are going to deliver to the parents, to the public of St. Lucia, 
to the schools, to the principals, and to those parents who said, I have already paid the facility fees, am I going to get my refund? The answer is yes, because the principals will have the money to give you a refund. And today, we are here to tell you parents, thanks for your, peer, for your patience, to say to the principals, thanks, we understand that you've been waiting. And so, this is the moment. We wasted no time. We, have, uh, we are starting the partial reopening of face-to-face -face instruction on Monday, and it couldn't be more timely. So again, I want to thank you, to thank all of you, and to tell you that the Ministry of Education and the Government of St. Lucia will continue to serve and continue to support the children, the parents, and the educators of St. Lucia. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Kudra. Um, just to piggyback on a comment that he made, I sat in the chair and I watched Dr. Antoine, and she had the demeanor of a principal presiding at Monday morning's assembly. <laughs> um, the only thing that was absent is the fact that she didn't have to call on any child to pay <laughs> attention, but she was in her element. And you can always tell the educators in ministerial life and in senior management positions in the, the, the public service. It, it shows, and for those of us who spend time in the classroom, um, I think this is the best orientation you can get to assume senior management positions in the public service. So I always encourage young people, when they come and they tell you, I don't want to teach, I'm just looking for a job, I want a bank. I encourage as many of them as possible to fill out a form and try and get yourself immersed in that vocation, that calling called teaching. And once you would have served well, trust me, um, it will be reflected in the things you do later on in life. I said this to say that I spent 17 years in the classroom at both the secondary and primary level. So I know the plight of teachers, the plight of principals, and um, what the system really requires of us. Let me say that I'm extremely pleased to be here today and to be part of this ceremony. It might be a very simple ceremony in terms of the construct, but the issue that is being addressed here today is profound, it is timely, and it is one that can yield great results for the education sector and by extension, our country. The late start was due in part to me being on the phone with the Prime Minister who is currently attending a virtual meeting. As Mr. Kojo would have indicated, you will notice that the Prime Minister is on the program. He really, really wanted to be here. It has become cliche and acceptable for persons who preside over ceremonies such as this one to make very glowing excuses for some individuals who never intended to <laughs> attend. And it sounds really well. That is good for the optics. But let me say this morning that Prime Minister Pierre really, really wanted to be here. And even at the head table, I was still trying to, to establish contact with his office to see if he could just squeeze a little five, 10 minutes to be part of the ceremony. But unfortunately, he cannot make it. And so he has asked me to convey his regards and best wishes to the educators in this room, and by extension, the people of this country. Let me say that delivering quality education anywhere in the world is an expensive venture. Delivering education is expensive. Delivering quality education is extremely expensive. Delivering quality education to the children of St. Lucia requires a lot of resources. It requires money, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars in order for us to deliver quality education to the children of our country. And so education is an expensive commodity. And in countries like ours, the cost of educating our children is one that has to be shared by the state and families. There are countries in the world, from the time you are born until you graduate out of university, you do not pay a cent. The state absorbs that cost because they have the capacity to do so. 
we are not yet there. And as small a step as it might be this morning for, this, for the government to be paying facilities fees on behalf of the children of this country, I want to let you know that this is the direction in which we are heading. This is where we want to be. We want a St. Lucia, and maybe it may not happen as quickly as we want because of some of the financial constraints we have as a country. But I must let you know that the objective and the ultimate goal is to be in a position one day where as a country we can provide quality education to the children of our country at absolutely no cost to the parents or the families from which the children come. Today, we have committed roughly $2.6 million. That is what will be disbursed to the primary and secondary schools in our country. And the objective is to help run the affairs of the schools. We are under no illusion as a government and as a ministry. And we don't want anybody to believe that we are saying in any way whatsoever that $2.6 million by way of facilities fees is a sufficient amount to take care of all the needs of the schools. But it represents and it symbolizes a very important first step. I told you in my preamble that I taught, and I am a veteran educator, and I know the sacrifices that principals, teachers, PTAs, parents, and even persons in the school who have no affiliation or direct affiliation with schools make to raise funds so that the schools can continue their operations on a daily basis to try and make the learning environment as comfortable and as effective for the children as possible. A learning environment cannot be fully effective if it is not comfortable. And so I know about the barbecues that schools have to organize. I know about students coming to knock on the door because they have a raffle sheet or a sponsor sheet. And I can tell you, when you are the parliamentary rep and your house is not fenced, <laughs> if the school gave out 50 donation sheets, rest assured, 50 students will be coming to your home. And it is not acceptable to any child to say that I'd already taken a chance on, on somebody else's shit. The expectation is there. And all of this is being done not because the principals and the administrators of our schools just want to put our children out there and they just want money, as some persons believe. It is because there's a burning desire to see schools do well. And principals and teachers have understood for decades in this country that the government alone cannot make all the resources available. And so many of them, our administrators, our principals, have gone beyond the call of duty to raise funds, find creative ways to get the money to the school so that they can create that environment for the children about which I spoke earlier. So cake sales, sometimes it's a car wash, a dance, pageants, and of late, I think dress down day is what we call it. That has become very fashionable and children look forward to paying their dollars so they can wear their little jeans and they can wear their socks and they can have their crazy, crazy hair day um, and things of that sort. It creates an excitement and at the same time, those are creative ways in which we're looking to raise monies so that um, our children can, can have the comfort levels in school to, to learn and to develop to become wonderful citizens. The Prime Minister also made a pronouncement on the campaign trail, which was echoed by many of us who contested the general elections for the St. Lucia Labour Party. And that is, this government will also be meeting the cost, the CSEC cost for mathematics and English for the next sitting. And we are at a very advanced stage where that is concerned. And I can tell you this morning that the memo that will be deliberated on at the level of cabinet in terms of the modalities that we use to make the monies available. That memo has been prepared, it has been signed, and I can assure you that it will feature very prominently on the cabinet agenda come Monday morning. There's a lot more we want to do and we will be doing for the education sector, but we cannot do it on our own. I have spoken in the two months that I've been entrusted with ministerial responsibility for education about forging that relationship with our stakeholders in 
cases where the relationship has already existed, we have to deepen those relationships. And I believe what, what is very refreshing about the leadership of some of the key stakeholder organiza organizations and the Ministry of Education is that we are all fraternal, not because of the national goals and the national imperatives we, we try to accomplish, but we all can relate in very direct ways to the challenges, the plight of teachers in the classroom. I have been saying for some time now that COVID has dealt a significant blow to every facet of national development. Every sector has been impacted by COVID and the education fraternity or sector has not been spared. But I'm encouraged by the resilience, the commitment, the drive and the passion that educators bring to the job. And this is not just a soundbite for the news. I genuinely believe so. Of course, like anything else, there are going to be some naysayers and detractors in our midst. But I can assure you everybody's point of view will be considered. But at the end of the day, I believe the majority of us are moving in the right direction. And once we continue to implore ourselves to believe that we are not in this just for the position and for ourselves, but we are in this for the salvation of our children at a time when our country needs us most. I believe we are going to accomplish and St. Lucia will be a much better place for the collective efforts of the educators in this country. So this morning, we will have the symbolic presentation of the resources and I want to urge the principals, the teachers and school administrators to please make good use of it. Um, these are very, very trying times the corporate community may not be able to come through um, for us as they've been able to do under normal circumstances. But as I said, every facet of society, every sector has been hit by COVID and even they too in the private sector um, have been reeling um, and they may not be able to come through in ways, as I said, that they would have in, in previous times. So let us be grateful for what has been made available to you. Um, we will spare no effort in ensuring that you get what you rightfully deserve. Um, and the Ministry of Education stands ready to partner you um, as you plan a new program for the students who will be interested in your care. We know that we return to face-to-face -face instruction on Monday, um, albeit in a very controlled way at the primary level. Our kindergartners will be coming back. I am very excited to enter the various school buildings to see our, kindergarten, our kindergartners in action, I can tell you. The, for me, they are the most exciting people in the school system. Um, they do not hold back. They sometimes tell you where they saw you yesterday, um, <laughs> to your surprise, and you think it's a bit much. And I just love to see the interaction between kindergartners and their teachers. And I think, and as much as some schools were able to make strides with the online, on the, with the online platform, um, I think there can be no substitute for face-to-face teacher-student interaction. And the more of our children can get into mainstream schooling by way of face-to-face -face interaction with teachers, the better it will be for us. The environment will be a challenging one. Let me say to principals and teachers, you, there are going to be bumps along the road. Do not be too quick to hoist the white flag of submission. Put calls through to the ministry. Let us have meaningful engagements and dialogue. Let it not be a contest, because as I said, all of us in this country, in these trying times, have to be pulling in the same direction for the salvation of our country and for the betterment of our children. Also, yeah, Lawrence Kaini, Ati Bagay, about Saki Gafet Hodia, and Kuyol. Like, we just leave the occasion for the that I say, I'll permit the government to make sure that we can pay for the facilities fees by all of us. We have the school that we have to pay for the money to pay pour bailler l'école et bien payer en l'école là sur l'école là ça n'est l'argent pour faire plus bagaille passer ministre éducation ça fait baillo et nous prenons décision comme gouvernement that OG payon ni pour fuir les meilleurs en poche yo et pour payer l'argent ça gouvernement quand met des marches en place pour voir qui nous paye ça bail c'est faire on et donc à aujourd'hui c'est un bon jour pour ça fait parce qu'on savent covid a affecté monde en travail yo il a affecté nos pays 
avec le pays encore à jouer. C'est plus difficile aujourd'hui pour ça. Jouer l'agence à la pour payer c'est l'école là. Et nous avons ça, c'est un bon démarche. En jour comme aujourd'hui, en tant que nous avons un petit web pour la petite COVID, nous avons un gouvernement, ça a mis là, là, c'est même en ce qui est fait à l'école là. Donc, l'année plus, l'autre bagaille nous voulons faire, et puis, les gens qui travaillent en département d'éducation et qui dans l'école là. Nous comprenons aussi, la première ministre, nous passons à rester en office, nous castrer, et puis, nous avons conduit qui est ce qui est nous avons assis et puis mettre l'école, mettre l'école, um, officier d'éducation, P1, et qui nous parler, nous parlons de nos copains, de um, manière dont nous avons fait, et nous avons fait comme ça, um, nous avons un système d'éducation qui est plus effectif et qui nous permet de nous une éducation qui nous permet de um, développer un citoyen qui nous servir de nous de la manière qui nous permet de bénéficier de nous tous. So, je vous dis merci pour tout le monde qui est venu ici à bon matin pour witness ceremony ça et mon kakwe quand c'est si maintenant et que c'est joie qui venu nous kaiwe des matchs qui a fait une éducation qui a mené la joie et puis satisfaction par tout le monde qui est dans le secteur éducation pays. Je voulais aussi dire que lundi qui a venu, lundi 25 en mois octobre, je ne vais pas parler de votre journée créole, mais Um, <coughs> Maman, nous avons dans l'école. Comme ça, pour la petite COVID, et puis c'est que nous avons combien de monde qui a COVID dans le pays, sans que nous avons des actifs cases, et puis nous avons COVID de cas si mais en tio, sans que nous avons des transmission rate. Ça, le de santé a dit nous, nous avons ça à la manière que nous avons contrôlé pour le moment, et que ça, ça a une cause à danser ma main pour venir à l'école. Donc, so, à l'école première, nous avons regardé les kindergartners, ma main qui est rentrée à l'école pour la première fois, nous avons vu l'école, et nous avons besoin de faire classe yo online, mais nous avons allé à l'école, et puis les teachers, et nous avons fait différents leçons, et puis nous avons fait comme ça. Aussi, à l'école première, nous avons eu le grade 6, et 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 puis à l'école secondaire, um, nous avons une maman qui est en forme 4 et puis forme 5, maman qui a préparé pour ça en anglais, vous connaissez l'autre, comme CXC exams, mais actuellement nous avons créé 6 sec exams. Et puis maman, ça a fait SBA, et puis nous avons un chai lisson. Et par l'autre, cette liste, nous avons un débat entre nous, si pour ouvert et pas ouvert, nous avons un chai lot pays à Caribla qui a pris une démarche, et nous avons actuellement mis les en place to ensure the continued <laughs> instruction of their children. And so we cannot lag behind. Time is against us. And the sooner we can get a much firmer grip on the COVID situation in country, I think the better it will be, not just for our secondary school children, but for the entire sector. So thank you very much for attending, and best wishes to everyone.